The video game niche on YouTube is ruthless. It doesn't pay well compared to other niches, the competition is fierce, and the time that it takes to grow can be demoralizing. For me, whenever I see a YouTuber in the niche that started from simple roots yet grew despite all of that into a dominant presence on the platform, it's really inspiring. Few people capture that spirit for me more than Little Z, a YouTuber from Australia who cut his teeth on montage videos, but eventually grew into an online personality with nearly a million subscribers at the time of this recording. But how did he do it? How did someone break through such an oversaturated genre on YouTube and gain enough momentum to have an average of over 900 subscribers every day for the last year? Let's get into it. Zach Traharn was born in Australia in 1995, and like many other successful YouTubers, he'd seemed to always have a love of creating videos. While not too much is known about his personal life compared to some other YouTubers out there, we can see the foundations of a passion for video creation starting very early on. His first YouTube channel that we have record of was called Here With Deformities, and began posting back on June 1st of 2008. This was just a few years after YouTube itself launched, and it's really around when it started gaining momentum and people all over the world were discovering how fun it was to make videos that you could share with your friends online. I can't speak to the culture in Australia, but as for me growing up in the States, maybe around the same time of 2006 to 2008, everyone and their dogs started getting into making home videos. I even made some myself as early as 4th grade around the age of 9. Simple advancements in technology like easily portable cameras or iMovie opened up the doors to a whole new generation of people like Zach to try their hand at video making. And it seems like he was no exception to this newfound global spark of interest as he began loading the small channel with all kinds of videos. His very first one was called The Adventures of the Toastbusters, a short stop motion Lego animation depicting something. This continued into other stop motion content, such as this animation featuring clay blobs, as well as a variety of other videos. He had everything up there from tricks on a ripstick to Mario Paint music, short skits, and eventually even Team Fortress 2 clips. Around the same time, he also made at least one extended skit with his friends, a Harry Potter parody that he reacted to for his 500,000 subscriber special. Now, I want to call attention to both the TF2 clips as well as the skit, because I think that they lay an interesting groundwork for his channel. We'll come back to the skit a little bit later, but his last video posted on the original channel was a Team Fortress 2 clip called TF2 Demo Man Sticky Jump Fail, posted on January 11th, 2012, after which he would take a two-year hiatus from public video creation. Now, the reason that I mentioned this TF2 video specifically is that those kind of videos weren't anything super new on YouTube, but it was something that Zach still embraced in spite of that. And this leads us to the creation of the Little Z channel, a name that came from a nickname that he had in high school. The very first video on the channel was posted February 9th, 2014, just about two years after the end of Here With Deformities. The video was titled, Nose Pass is OP, Pokemon Showdown Forfeit Inducer. This video is so interesting to me for a plethora of reasons. For starters, I think that it's noteworthy that one of the biggest names in the Super Smash Bros niche on YouTube today got his start by making Pokemon videos rather than Smash videos but it's also really interesting to see the response to it. Currently, the video has over 200,000 views, and one might assume that all of the traction on that came after Little Z's rise to fame, and much of it likely did. But if you look at those comments from six years ago when he originally posted the video, the reception was overwhelmingly positive. People expressed how funny the video was, talked about their run-ins with his Pokemon, and they were even showing confidence in the fact that they believed Little Z would grow up to be huge on YouTube. And they were right. He did eventually hit his stride with Super Smash Bros content, but it took a while to get there. Despite being centered around Pokemon, much of old Z's content was reminiscent in spirit of what we see today. Everything from the editing and the funny content down to the exact naming structure of his videos, which would later become the title of his most popular video series. This Pokemon content was different in subject matter than the current content on the channel, but it wasn't bad by any means, and for a small channel, seemingly was performing decently. Z kept up with his Character is Overpowered series, going through many different gimmicky Pokemon, and he posted a variety of other Pokemon Showdown content. His small but niche audience at the time is no surprise to me. He did a lot of things really well right from the beginning of his channel. He interacted with his community, he had a magnetic personality, and he even logistically did a lot of things right with his use of tags, a consistent naming structure, and a consistent visual style of his thumbnails that made his videos more recognizable. 
And this era of Little Z, before the one we know today, filled with Pokemon content wasn't short-lived. In other videos I've created, I've talked about creators like Alpharad, who took around 11 videos to find his How to 101 series that sent his channel into the spotlight. Or Scott the Waz, who only posted three videos on his channel before refining his titular series. But Little Z posted 78 Pokemon videos before he ever made his first Super Smash Bros. content. This is equally as impressive to me as Scott the Waz or Alpharad, but for a totally different reason. While it does take a certain sense of awareness and luck to find a niche quickly, there is definitely something to be said about creating the better part of a hundred videos without giving up before you get there. And the transition from one niche to another is not an easy one either. So many things can go wrong at so many different points. But Little Z once again got a lot right here in terms of transition strategy. He kept the same series format as his other successful Pokemon videos, and he kept a consistent tone despite the shift in subject matter. On April 8th, 2015, over a year after the creation of his channel, Little Z posted his very first ever Super Smash Bros. montage video. The title was Wario is OP, standing for Overpowered. The response to this video is tangibly different when compared to that of his Pokemon videos. Even after all of this time has passed, his most popular Pokemon era video was his very first one, Nose Passes OP. But those views are likely inflated today due to the fact that many people go back to see a YouTuber's first video. But when you take the average for his Pokemon videos, even today after his rise, the video videos only have around 4 to 7,000 views. Wario is overpowered on the other hand, is sitting at just over 1.5 million views as of the time of this recording, and it marks a notable turning point in his channel. Rather than turning back to his original Pokemon content after one deviant video, Z dived headfirst into this new content and poured gasoline on the metaphorical fire of growth. His next six videos were all additional entries in the Smash Characters Overpowered series, with each one currently over 1 million views today. While today's view count likely isn't super representative of what he saw at the time of posting that first Wario video, we can see that his channel skyrocketed super quickly, as he soon posted a video announcing that he had reached the milestone of 25,000 subscribers on June 17th, 2015, just under three months after his very first Smash Bros video. This wildly successful series didn't stop either. This YouTuber from the land down under was suddenly skyrocketing through the ranks of Smash YouTubers, who could hear the thunder of his success making waves, and they had better run and better take cover because his rise wasn't stopping anytime soon. Amidst the success of his OP series, Little Z was also testing the waters to see if another series would be able to catch on with the same kind of momentum, specifically trying one called Smash Snapshots, which played like a one-minute bite-sized version of his OP videos. I think that this is a valuable lesson for any content creator to learn from. When a video series gets some kind of traction, doubling down can be a vital part of growing, but that traction can only continue for a certain amount of time before people either lose interest or else you run out of content. And with YouTube, the long-term game plan always has to be reinvent or retire. And by testing out new content concurrent to his already proven video series, Little Z was creating a few different exit strategies to his new content once his OP series ran its course, intentionally or not. Some of the series that ended up catching traction today are his You Lose You Cosplay series, The Most Elite Character series, Road to Elite Smash, and he also saw success in some random videos like recreating moves from Smash Bros in real life, which was a topic that even saw some traditional news coverage. When you look through these series and Little Z's channel as a whole, you won't find a ton on the surface that you haven't seen elsewhere. Elite Smash and montages are a dime a dozen on YouTube, but what sets Z apart is how well he executes on it. In the book Hitmakers by Derek Thompson, the author discusses the fact that time and time again, the recipe for viral fame is taking a familiar topic and putting a unique spin or twist on it. This gray area of seeming familiar and yet novel at the same time can be seen all over pop culture today. Take Star Wars for example one of the most popular franchises of all time. It takes a bunch of familiar ideas like knights, ancient monks, a hero's journey, and a rebellion, but it puts a unique spin on all of them. This results in a product that reminds us just enough of what we've seen before to feel familiar, but just new enough to inspire intrigue. In my opinion, this is the exact reason that Little Z's channel works so well. Whether it's Pokemon montages, Smash highlights, TF2 videos, or attempting challenges in a game, he takes a very familiar type of video but puts his own Little Z spin 
spin on it, creating a super relatable end product. He's sort of like the My Hero Academia of Smash YouTubers, by which I mean he takes a tried and true method, but he executes on it so well that it feels fresh and fun and you forget you're watching a type of video that you've seen before. And part of the reason that Zack is able to apply this appeal so well is his magnetic personality. Like many other YouTubers, he's really funny, but there's more to it than that. He also creates an atmosphere around his channel that makes it feel as though you're hanging out with an old friend playing video games. He's warm and welcoming, but hearkening back to that Harry Potter skit, he also creates a bunch of content with his best friends. This not only increases the inviting nature of his channel, but it also creates a synergy between Zack's viewers and the people who watch his friends' channels, who are also notable in the Smash YouTuber niche like Hopcat. This synergy eventually evolved into its own channel called The Underdogs, where Little Z creates dedicated content in collaboration with the friends previously featured on his channel. Little Z has also collaborated with bigger names in the scene like Hungrybox or Alpharad, making his name even more recognizable. And all of this comes together to create a network of interconnectivity, leading to a sense of camaraderie, positivity, and fun coming from the channel. On paper, it seems like the entire Little Z channel was handcrafted to be as relatable as possible. Whether that be the sense of community I just spoke of, the humble origins of the channel, or the familiar themes on the channel, I watch it and just feel like I fit in with a group of people that I've never met before, and I think that that same sort of relatability is what keep people coming back to the channel. People don't actually tune into the Little Z channel for Smash Bros or humor, they tune in for the personality and the escape that it provides to hundreds of thousands of people every single day. Thanks for watching, and until next time, stay smashing.